We did it. We're live. We did In it. a new location. Look at us. Look at all the books. So many books. So many books. So many books. <laughs> so yeah, we're in a new location. We're a little discombobulated. Uh, but uh, this is Kayla's lair, which this is rad. My lair. Uh, Afro Rails here, so that's cool. And we're going to talk about Meddling Kids, which was our book for March. We're going to start doing themed months, but her and I need to like figure out what the themes are. So we don't know what they are yet. We'll make it happen. Except for next month. Yes. Or this month. Anyway. So, we read Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. Hopefully I said that correctly. I and nice. it's, I, I thought it was just going to be a throwback to Scooby-Doo, and largely it is. But a lot of it is to Hardy Boys, to Nancy Drew, even Buffy the Vampire Slayer. There's a few Buffy there was, references. It was very Buffy-esque, I thought. Which I thought was cool. Yeah. In fact, um, one of, basically Velma and Daphne are combined into one character, who is Carrie. Mm -hmm. And then the other character, Andy, she is based on a series of books. I read it online. I've not read the books myself, but there's a character from them. It's called, like, I can't remember. Look it up on Wikipedia. Anyway, she's from one of those books. And then you have a character who's kind of like Freddy. You have a character who's kind of like Shaggy. Like, they're borrowing from a lot of different characters yeah. in these groups. So... Um, even that character, I thought his interest in my fantasy was a little like Xander from Buffy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not as familiar with some of these other mystery groups. So I think if you're really familiar with them, you're going to get so much more. I know Andy characters taken directly out of this other book series. Yeah. Funny. So, I want to know what it is now. You know what? I should look it up for you. You should look it up. But it was, tell them about what the book's about while I look it up. So it's almost kind of like an it situation right yeah yeah like yes they have to go back and they have to go back so they were a summer detective club um they you know solved mysteries through their small town of blighton hills is that right something like that yeah because it it's like the blight and something mystery something club like blighton hills summer detective club yeah there um, you go your dog is being too cute I know, she's being really silly over there um they it's a little town in oregon they are a summer detective club. They, you know, solve all these mysteries and then they're grown up. That happens really quickly in the book. Um, and they, uh, I'm saying, uh, um, they have to go back. They feel like they haven't finished the miss the last mystery that they solved. So they have to go back, um, and figure out what really happened. Um, and kind of close their, uh, so it's uh, Andy's from the Famous Five series. There's a character who is Latina. She's a tomboy. Uh, he almost directly yoinked that character out of there. And um, we do, we played this last month. <laughs> um, I am very visual and I love movies. So I when I start reading a book, um, as soon as they start telling us like what they look like roughly, because I get annoyed when I've cast them and then they tell me that I've got the hair color wrong halfway in the book. That's so annoying. Yeah. So annoying. Tell me what they look like right away. Immediately. Yes. Immediately. <laughs> and um, uh, the author pretty much said, uh, there's no one but Michelle Rodriguez who was Andy. So, yeah. like, you just got to go with that. I, uh, so I also, think Demi Lovato would work really well. Demi Lovato. I was also thinking Stephanie Beatriz. She was in Brooklyn from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Mm -hmm. I thought she would have been a good character. She's really good, too. Yeah. Um, I had... Originally Emma Stone, but I changed it to Deborah Ann Wall just because. Who's Deborah Ann Wall? She was in Daredevil and True Blood. She's the redheaded vampire in True Blood. She's in Daredevil. Uh, I wish I could think of. Anyway, Emma Stone That's would it. also work. Yeah. And then Andrew Garfield, you know, Spider Man for mm -hmm. Nate. Uh, for Peter, Ryan Gosling. Yeah. I thought that was perfect. Yeah. yeah. Nick Offerman is from Parks and Rec. Yes. He's Ron Swanson. Yeah. I thought he would be great as uh, Sheriff Copperseed. I agree with you, but I'm pretty sure Sheriff Copperseed is native, like is indigenous. He? I think so. From okay, the, then from you the, might need to change that. The I might end miss that. of the book. That's kind of what I gathered. Okay, you might need to change but I that. Could be wrong. All right, then you should change that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then for Captain Ella, I had Christopher Lloyd. Yeah. For Dunia, hopefully I said that right. Angela Bassett and Joey James Vanderbeek. Yeah. I like that. It's I, awesome. I like Angela Bassett as Junia. She is almost like taller and like much more regal than she's I was picturing. Older woman, but, but she's she sexy. It. She can do whatever she and wants. And Angela Bassett's sexy, sexy, even though she's an older woman. Um, and Chris, the Captain Al character, I kind of, I think Christopher Lloyd would be great. He's very like crazy and um, 
you know, office rocker. But I pictured Captain Al as somebody like a little more sh like shorter and stockier and disheveled, like more disheveled than Christopher Lloyd. I was thinking kind I don't of have like, an actor like in mind, Scooby Doo, but... like old man Rickles, like that yeah. kind of a guy, the scrawny little old guy. But I like what you're saying too, because I think that. they do mention that he is a more rotund. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are just mine. Yeah. Um, by the way, there is a link in the description below to our Goodreads group where um, you know, we post updates as we're reading the book. Um, we'd love to have discussions with you guys mm -hmm. as we're reading the book. And I would love to hear your guys' castings for each book. Yes. That's just something we're going to continue to do. That's really <clears> fun. <throat> I feel like I get really stuck when it comes to castings. I always want to just be like Tom Holland. Tom Holland Why is not? in everything. Why not? The that's director that's or Spider-Man. You can mix it up, actually. <laughs> you can make it really fun. Yeah. I love oh, that. that reminds me. We need to read the Friday Night book eventually that Tom Holland wrote. Ooh. And I think I have the... Uh, Hellraiser one on my Kindle that he wrote or something like that. Fright Night. Fright Night. It's um kind of the prequel to the movie that Tom Holland directed. Tom Holland also directed Child's Play. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, yes, Ariel. Um, I got sick earlier this week, and my witch doctor was fresh out of virgin's blood. So unfortunately, <laughs> not the best week for me. Um, but I'm feeling much better now. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, internet issues still because we're switching into the fiber land, which will mean in the long run, I'm gonna have better internet. But I mean, right now, look at this fun little field trip we're on, guys. There we are. So cool. Class field trip. Exactly. Fred's neckerchief is fantastic. Okay, guys, okay, I know we're gonna talk about the book. We're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about the book. Okay. My son is a massive, you know, Lol's my son, massive Scooby-Doo fan. He insists I am the only Fred Stan. Fred is my absolute favorite character. I love how wholesome he is. I love all his little expressions. I just think he's precious, except for in the new Velma show. I don't like him in that one. Um, I feel like that's not well loved all around. No. So, but I don't know anything but about it. So Scooby-Doo, where are you? Most of the original shows, I just adore Fred. If you are a Fred Stan as well, you know, represent. Let me know, because I feel like I can't be alone. I can't be alone. I don't know enough about it to be able to tell you if I am or not. I, I need to get on it. Precious. I believe he yeah. is so precious. Also, I have to argue, I think Daphne is a very attractive woman. Mm -hmm. Velma's the sexiest. It's the knee dimples, dude. Those knee <laughs> dimples. Girl. Sexy. Sexy. Let me know if you agree. Uh, Danny uh, is at the time capsule. What's up, time Hi, capsule? Time capsule. Hi. <laughs> um, all right. Some weirdo says I look great. You do look I'm great. Oh, actually, we got a comment on our last video um, that they loved your cardigan. It was my skull one, yes. wasn't it? But yes, I it had to take it off because I got way too hot. It was a hit. Fred is the weakest. That's from Danny, and Danny don't know anything, so. You don't know nothing. Though, I mean, if you mean physically weak, possibly Velma's the strongest because she can carry the entire gang plus the dog. <laughs> she is <laughs> They do strong. that in the book, too. I know. <laughs> so back to the book. Yeah, I got a little yeah, locked out. That's okay. Um, it's kind of like she said, like a uh, it, yes. where uh, they had very Scooby Doo esque mysteries that they solved, where it's a guy in a mask, mm -hmm. and the last one wasn't right. It was they solved uh, it. The guy in the mask went to jail, and then but they all always felt like there was more to it. So like there's something supernatural, like yeah. there's something wrong and it really messed up their lives. Uh, Nate can't deal. So he's in a psychiatric hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Andy kind of just takes off, yeah. like gets as far away from town as possible. She goes to jail a few times. She's just kind of a mess. Yeah. Um, Carrie, uh, she, you know, goes to study biology, but then she drops out and she's, you know, tending, working bar, at a bar, taking care of a dog, not doing a lot with her life. And then poor Peter. Yeah. yeah. He became a, a movie star, mm -hmm. child star. And then he did a few adult movies and then he, it seemed like he intentionally overdosed. He killed himself. Yeah. So something really rotten happened. And it's really interesting, okay, not a there. huge spoiler here, but kind of the way the book like lets you know that we're not in Coolsville anymore, is uh, Andy, uh, she tracks down the guy who did it, who was the man in the mask. And she basically says, why did you confess to it? Yeah. You didn't do it, There was you? clearly more going on. Why would you do that? The guy is terrified to go back to that town. So she's like, no, there is something else there and we need to stop it. We need to take care of it for reals because otherwise it's just going to keep infecting our lives and it's just going to eventually destroy all of us because yeah. there's something really evil there. Yes. 
Ripley! She's being a huge dork right now. I don't know what Yes, the 100th is. anniversary of Warner Brothers. By the way, Warner Brothers, for their 100th anniversary, released these new Funkos. They're Looney Tunes characters as Scooby-Doo characters. Mostly they're pretty cute, like Bugs Bunny as Fred. Oh, cute. Lola Bunny as Daphne. Daffy as Shaggy. Tasmanian Devil as Scooby. The one that Lols and I are like, it's... Tweety Bird is Velma, but she's naked. Oh, oh. I get that Tweety's naked, but all the other ones get clothes. Yeah, it's just, Velma it's weird. It's weird. Give them, give them a close. Yeah. Like, why not? Okay. okay. Ripley. Hi, Ripley. She's being a weird Ripley, one. are you going to co-host? So, um, dog representation. Let's talk about how the dogs were represented in yeah, uh, Tim was, I think, my favorite part of the whole book. <laughs> he was my favorite part. And so all my end, favorite scenes. Yes, until the end. But we'll talk spoilers at the very end. We're not yeah. going to spoil too much aside from initial premise yes. stuff. Um, yeah, until the end. Yeah. Um, my favorite thing. So if you watch Scooby-Doo, where are you? One of the ongoing things is Scooby famously does not get along with other little critters like mm -hmm. gophers, squirrels, gerbils, except for one time when a baby chick thought it was his mama. Oh, cute. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's a little, a little canary at one point in his interactions with it. And just, he has a very Scooby-Doo air about him without making it cartoony. So no, like, he's very sweet. He's very silly. Like he'll go into someone's house and he'll be like, Oh, you've baked biscuits. Mm -hmm. Like, or they'll be at a restaurant and he's staring at all the food, which is a very dog thing to do. But yeah. if you love Scooby, then you can kind of, you know, see that Scooby-dish, scooby -dish in him. And he's brave and he does look out for them. Uh, he loves this little penguin toy. Yeah, his little pink one that he saves. Yes. Yeah. He loves it so much. He loves his, his team. And they do treat him like a member of the team. Yes. They're very big on how when they were younger... Peter was always like, let's split up because we can cover more ground. And they're like, no, we never split up. And that means the dog, too. Yep. Let's he stays absolutely. with them for a lot of it. Like, they talk about, you know, his safety when they're going down into the mines. Um, they get him, like, a little gas mask. And he, like, doesn't understand it. But they carry him. It's so cute. Like, they really... Um, he's really a member of the team. It's he the, really is. It's the five of them. And yeah. they do... so. One thing that uh, um, I'm going to break from talking about characters to talk about writing stuff. Because you know oh, what? Yeah, we yeah. do our own thing here. Um, <laughs> the writing style is really weird. Really weird. I, I don't want to say it's bad. It's different. One, I think the author, Edgar Cantero, mm -hmm. is wonderful with a metaphor. Mm -hmm. He has so many really cool metaphors yeah, he does in really this good movie. Job. Actually, really. In this, movie, this, this book. In this book. <laughs> I really liked the writing style. I felt like it broke it up and kind of made it easier to 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 digest almost um have you ever read any tom robbins no no he did like even cowgirls get the blues mm -hmm. and it was kind there were times where i thought a lot about him he has this way of like describing things and he goes on for almost way too long but i feel like edgar cantero did something similar to that but it wasn't as obnoxious it's very cinematic mm -hmm. so there are times where it straight goes into like a screenplay mm -hmm. where it's screenplay dialogue and it will even describe the scene like it would be in a screenplay yeah um and it will cut to different scenes like you would like if you're watching it like you'll be in the house with them and then i'll cut to a wide shot where you can hear the scream mm -hmm. so it's very cinematic yeah but it is a little different you know if you're not used to that my only complaint with the writing is it's in deep third person. So deep third person means that you can hear the thoughts and stuff within the character's brain. And typically when a book does that, they stick to one person or they'll change with each chapter. Very rarely do, does a book change with each paragraph. You can do that, um, but it has to be done, I think, a certain way for it to be like not so confusing. Mm -hmm. He does it a few times where I'm like, a paragraph ago, we were in Carrie. Now we're in somebody else. Like, a, it's a lot of head hopping. Well, and there's a lot of stuff that happens with Nate and Peter where I was getting confused as to who was the one speaking. Yes. There was a little bit of that, too. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's nice that we get to experience all of the characters. I think I would have liked it better if he would have done it more like Cabin at the End of the World, mm -hmm. where each chapter was from a different character's point of view. Yeah. Because he does hop around a lot. And it is a little jarring. Like, okay, what, we're in the dog's head now? I thought yeah. we were in Andy's head. Yeah. Um, largely, I would say Andy's mostly the main character. She's, I would say so, too. I think she's the main character. Yeah. 
So uh, let's talk about Andy. I like Andy. I thought she was cool. She's badass, yeah. uh, tough, very Michelle Rodriguez-y. Yeah. Um, also kind of reminded me of Kelly from um, Ash vs. Evil Dead. She's just a really cool, no-nonsense kind of gal. But she's, you know, she cares genuinely about her friends. Yes. and doesn't want anything bad to happen to them. I liked her. Um, uh skip somebody we'll save them for the <laughs> end because there's someone i don't like yeah i like nate a lot nate basically gets exposed to kind of occultism yeah yeah through their investigations and yeah. that leads him into the realm of fantasy he starts investigating it because a lot of fantasy things are based on truth mm -hmm. but then he just likes it yeah he goes into like deep fantasy like almost some kind of like lovecraftian type stuff like he gets really deep into a lot of weird Books, weird books, yeah, which I like, yeah, yeah. He's a, and this he's a book is Lovecraftian too, by the way. Yes, this it book is. is very Lovecraftian. Yeah, um, I liked Nate too. I wish we would have gotten, I I wish we would have gotten more backstory on all of the characters. I've especially like our our main group. Um, at first, too, especially, I felt like I didn't really care about like why they were doing what they were doing. Like I needed a little bit more to like build them up. Yeah. Before just diving right into the All we're really given is Nate and Carrie are cousins. Yeah. Carrie's family raises the dogs. Mm -hmm. They initially have a dog named Sean, and they the dogs they have are all related. Mm -hmm. Um and they met Peter and Andy at summer camp, and they just were like, Hey, come spend summers with us. Yeah. And that became a thing. But we really don't know anything about their home life, their parents, um, except for the, the cousins, they lived with their aunt during the summers. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't tell you anything about Andy's parents mm -hmm. or, you know, anyone's parents or if they have siblings yeah. or anything. That's yeah. not really developed at all. No. And that was the only thing I really wanted, just to care more about why they were so traumatized through this experience. Like, I, I felt like I didn't get enough. Like, I, I mean, I get it now, having read it, like, why the whole thing would have been traumatic. Um, there was a lot more going on. But... At the beginning, I was like, I don't care. Like, why do they feel the need to go back so badly? I think it would have been good if we started, you know, a lot of books come, sometimes start with like an action scene, mm -hmm. a prologue mm -hmm. scene. And I actually feel like there was a prologue scene in this. I can't remember. I don't know. I'm reading a couple different books yeah. at the same time. They were both very Lovecrafty, so, so I could be wrong. But uh, there might have been. Yeah. I think there was. There was like two Swedish tourists at the beginning, wasn't there? Uh, No, that's no. the other book I'm reading. No, Never mind. Never was, mind. It was the guy, the the guy at his parole hearing. That's right. I think had they ended, they, the first chapter should have been when they caught the guy and amassed mm -hmm. him, which is such a Scooby-Doo scenario. It's what you expect from the cover mm -hmm. and them as children. And then a so-and-so many years later yeah. to them as adults, I think introducing them as children and seeing them um, catch that guy yeah. in a very typical scenario for Scooby-Doo would have been a great way to and understanding it. their early relationships like how how they were as kids because all we really got was them now as adults having kind of gone their separate ways and then coming back together you know yeah so uh I liked Peter a lot I think Peter's really funny I think uh mm -hmm. I pictured Ryan Gosling he's very very arrogant um, but he's funny yeah. and he says exactly what he thinks. Like, you know, and they're like, we're not going to split up anymore. He's like, but you cover more ground. Like he's just, he's really funny. Yeah. Um, we get to see him because uh, Nate, even though Peter's passed away, Nate, um, he sees like a hallucination of Peter or it could be his ghost. You don't really know. You don't really know. So, um, but so you get an idea of Peter's personality, even though he's not alive. Yes. The character I don't like. And again, I'm really annoyed because this is a character that not one, but two characters have a crush on in this book. And I can't yeah. tell you why, because she is awful. Yeah. Is Carrie. Carrie. Carrie is a combination. By the way, Zygma, tell Mummy Bee Movie to join the stream because she read the book with us. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, Carrie is a combination of Daphne. She's got Daphne's red hair, um, that kind of thing. Her hair is its own character. Really, I actually at first I was like, "Oh, that's cool how he's using metaphors to describe her hair as like, it was emotions." Cool the way he did it, it was really beautiful. It got really old, but she was so lame that it, it, it did. It got old. It got really old, and the problem is, is she's she's also de she's also Velma. She's the smartest one in the group. When she was a kid, mm -hmm. she wore glasses and really into biology and such. Mm -hmm. 
and um she was going to be a biologist so she's the velvet and the daphne she's yeah. the attractive one and, and she's the nerd smart. so um yeah instantly we're like well what's not to like about that she's not nice early on they talk about how good she is with the dog she swats at the dog yeah. she's rude to the dog the dog is very obedient tim she's pretty irritated by the dog in general it feels like almost all the time is constantly um, snapping she at him just doesn't seem to really care strict about anything um her friends like if they say something wrong uh, that's grammatically incorrect she will correct it which is just a dick move i have a degree in english mm -hmm. i catch stuff like that all the time i don't correct people all right that just makes you sound like an asshole mm -hmm. and i think they actually teach you that when you get your english degree mm -hmm. don't do that it makes you it makes you sound like an asshole yeah um there's a lot of different ways to use the english language aside from what is taught in books it's all it's all good y'all yeah. yeah um that's how we evolve and grow the language and i liked that too about andy because andy uses a lot of the wrong words a lot of the time and that was kind of like a buffy-esque thing they yes. like even make up some words and um i liked that about her I but especially cute. when it's people you like mm -hmm. like you learn to even like oh you know how how cute it is that the, especially if someone that you're you know hopefully gonna have a relationship yeah. with, you would be like that's so cute that they do that yeah you know um you don't talk down to them she talks down to them all the time like they're idiots at one point she's doing an autopsy and she's just like yeah i was concentrating it's just like you are a bitch yeah. the other thing i really hate about her is she's so arrogant and she's so bossy but the moment anything scary happens she is a puddle on the floor and crying yeah she loves and so she's so alive. great but she needs everybody to hold her hand stop what they're doing take care of her she is so weak she is yeah. such a weak character and I for somebody agree. who that's fine that there are there are people who just can't handle scary stuff and that's mm -hmm. fine if she was a nicer character i would have been okay with it yeah she's not nice though so it's like you're a bitch and you're a weakling she's pretty lame she was just i don't know just not i don't know lame not cool i didn't like her i didn't really like her wait i'm trying to <laughs> uh okay oh, what, are you saying? Yeah. what is he saying what does Zigwood say everybody works as me and insert person name uh oh well that Instead depends of, like that person and me or that there person and that I. depends a lot of people think it's always i again it's a grammar <laughs> thing and i don't correct people but it, this is a, a common thing you come across mm -hmm. in a sentence when um you would say like i'm going to the store you would say kayla and i are going to the store yeah. But if you would say um, the book belongs to me, yeah. or it's or it's or, well, I'm trying to. Yeah. It, if it's in the sentence, if you normally say me, you still say me. So you just take the other person out of it, and if you still say me, that's when you use me. Then you use me. It's an easy one. But at the same time, like you know, when you're hanging out with your friends and you're just having a good time, like we're not all English majors. It doesn't really matter. Say whatever. It's you, a you buzzkill. It's cute. It's cute. Exactly. And, and it could have been approached that way. It could have been like, and Andy said another word wrong and Carrie fawned at her or something Well, like and that. she could have, you know, I think being someone who has an English degree and loves a lot of people who are word nerds, um, a way to show that without being an asshole, having her correct people's grammar and talk down to them like they're idiots, because um, obviously they aren't, aren't stupid characters. Mm -hmm. um, she could have like, you know, uh, used words that she was excited about to describe something perfectly or something like that's yeah. a cute way of showing that she's smart the way they're doing it, having her correct people and talk down to them it's irritating yeah yeah i agree 100 percent. love it you could have they could have he could have shown that she's smart without her being rude yeah yeah she i feel she didn't add a lot to the story it shouldn't add, I don't know. Really Velma's add. a great example. Velma is crazy smart. She mm -hmm. never talks down to the gang. Um, she appreciates that everyone brings their own thing to the group. She's never like, oh, Daphne, you wouldn't know. Or, you know, Shaggy, that's not how you say that. You know, Hello. Shaggy uses like incorrectly all the time. Mm -hmm. Never once heard Velma no. correct him. Never once. Willow, same. Really smart. Mm -hmm. Never talked down to anybody. Exactly, because she loves her friends. She loves her friends. I don't think Xander's going to want to hang out with Willow anymore if every time she's like, no, it's... That, yeah. That's not how you say that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. It's whom. <laughs> whom. But I, uh, yeah. So the monsters. 
Let's talk about the monsters. Very the Lovecraftian. Monsters. Yeah, they were like um like creature from the Black Lagoon ish almost. It's very, um, you know, um, it's honestly a lot like another book I'm reading right now. Um, lots of tentacles, lots of, I mean, the, the book cover does a pretty good job of setting you up. Very the old ones, cthulhu mm -hmm. kind of thing. The mutants remind me a lot of the Weezers. Yeah, they <laughs> remind me a lot of a game I've been playing and that uh, uh, Retro Media Man is playing The Forest or Sons oh, of the Forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reminded me a lot yeah. of that. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, they were creepy. Um, I would love to see this book as an HBO show. I would love that too. Yeah. It's really cool. Like I think they did a really good way, good job of clearly showing love and appreciation for not just Scooby-Doo, but all of these mystery teams, but mm -hmm. creating something new mm -hmm. and creating something that was adult. Yeah. So, um, you know, like the Velma show, a lot of people didn't like it because it really, one, was just really, really a obnoxious but uh it's also instead of being funny it would just point out like the flaws in the shows like scooby-doo and stuff it's it's like well do you actually like it mm -hmm. i mean yes the show was made in the 60s it's got some outdated some tropes tropes and, and like such that, yeah. um but pointing out that something is outdated isn't funny in itself um it just makes you look like you're acting superior and i think that's why nobody liked velma mm -hmm. Um, nobody likes that. Yeah. So Velma, that's a whole other thing for another day, guys. <laughs> that show was a mess. Yeah. Um, but this, I feel like it does a good job of, it is adult, you mm -hmm. know, they, I don't feel, I mean, they swear, but it's not over the top. No. Like if they swear like normal people there, it's very, you have to keep in mind too, that they were children in the seventies. Yeah. This book takes place in like 1993 or something like that. I think it's been like 11 years, hasn't it? So yeah, probably I early 90s. I wrote it down in the book, but I gave the book to my It's like late 80s or early 90s. Yeah. So like they talk about like Coca-Cola a lot. And, you know, um, they all smoke, yeah. which is very weird for today's people. But like even when I was a teenager, a lot of people smoked. Everybody smoked. Everybody smoked. So teenagers, like it it, it, it fits their gen their Generation X, all right? Yeah. Generation X people, a lot of them smoked. Maybe they don't anymore if your parents do and they are Generation X and they don't now. You know, good for them. Yeah. But I knew a lot of them back in the day, guys. <laughs> right? They were the older kids smoking out back yeah. behind the school. They've at least done it twice. <laughs> yes. So it definitely addresses that. Um, I also like that this is an LGBTQ positive book. Yeah. I read some things in Goodreads that people were saying that it was transphobic, um, but I didn't pick up on that. I felt like he he towed the line of like incorporating it into the book without making it about that. And so maybe that is why it Read that I can way to some people. See why but... someone might say that. Um, one, Andy's not trans. No, Andy does identify as a woman. Mm -hmm. However, um, and I get this, so I'm gonna relate a little bit here. Being a kid who grew up on an Air Force base with brothers, I grew up in an Air Force base, and anything girly, um, stuff that was not you were not gonna make it. Mm -hmm. Um, all my friends were boys, so to do anything girly was to be weaker was to be less than, which sucks, you know? Um, I don't agree with that now, but it was the 80s. It was a different time, guys. Mm -hmm. And so I could see, like, you know, it was, like, cool to be, like, you were one of the guys yeah. or you were tough. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't want to be seen as the girly girl who couldn't play in the dirt. Yeah. Who couldn't, you know, rough house with the boys. Yes. And that's what Andy is. And on these missions and stuff, she wants to be seen as just as good and just as brave as the boys. She wants to be the bravest one in the group, mm -hmm. regardless of gender. And so when people are like, you know, she's like one of the boys or she's like a boy. Yeah. She takes that as a compliment because to her, you know, a girl like, mm -hmm. you know, their friend Carrie well, is somebody they, who's going to be scared and like in a corner and they crying. Make such a sticking point about her name, which to me felt the opposite of transphobic, right? Like her name is Andrea, but everybody calls her Andy. And when people do call her Andrea, it makes her so mad. I was like, oh, that makes sense to me. Like her dead name or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but like, cause at the end when Joey yells at her, 
That's what snaps her right? out of it. And then her. him using her, her dead name snaps her out of it. And it's like the only thing that could have snapped her out of the thing she was going through. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I'd have to read some I more reviews to see what she people are talking about. But accepts just, herself for who she is. I mean, I think yeah. gender identity is a spectrum. Mm-hmm. And I don't think she fully identifies as a boy, but she's definitely not a girly girl. I think yeah. she identifies herself, you know, like somebody like Michelle Rodriguez, yeah. who's just a tough, very, broad. very tough. Yes, and she <laughs> wants to have short hair, and she wants to be seen as somebody who's tough. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I think you can read that as trans too, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely don't think it's transphobic. I think I that is just Andy. Yeah, that is just who Andy is. Yeah, I agree. And just like we should accept people who are trans, and we should, you know, accept all people, we should just accept that yeah, that's Andy. That's that's how Andy identifies. Yeah, I agree. You know, nobody gets to dictate how you should identify yourself, but you. The book tells us how she wants to be identified. Yep, it does. I liked it. Um, what Here's what I didn't like. Yeah. So Andy, and it kind of reminded me of Willow in this respect, because mm-hmm. Willow initially dates a boy, and it's not like she ever just decides that she uh, doesn't like boys anymore. She just said she falls in love with a, a girl. Right. And Andy, her whole life, has been in love with Carrie. Don't know why. <laughs> Carrie's awful. Tell us how you really feel about it. <laughs> I, I was wondering, I was going to ask you how you felt about Carrie. See, Ripley Hi, knows baby. you're so upset about it. Why is she so upset? <laughs> we love you. I don't know. You're wonderful. <laughs> you're so nice. You're so cute. I was like, well, what, do you so like mad? Carrie? Like, you mean? I, no, I don't like her either. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being funny. <laughs> yeah, she's terrible. But yeah, Andy's in love with her. And then they but have. Why? A, I don't know. But then they have this moment. After Carrie loses her mind because she sees a monster um, and Andy's comforting her where Again. Andy tells her that she's in love with her and she's been in love with her since they were 11 years old. Um, and Carrie just kind of takes it like they deal with it. Um, and, you know, slowly throughout the rest of the book, they form a relationship, but it doesn't. And that's weird. So I've noticed this sometimes. I've noticed this sometimes with people who are not LGBTQ trying to be inclusive and do it but they clearly they don't seem to have an understanding of it they're not writing them just write them like a normal relationship yeah you know and yes i'm speaking from somebody who is lgbtq i am pan so you know i'm not speaking out of my butt here (laughs) but um he didn't write them like a normal relationship so in any situation if somebody says i'm in love with you that does not mean we're in a relationship no you can be in love with me all you want I can be in love with you all I want. That does not mean we're in a relationship. Andy announces that she's in love with Carrie, has been forever. Mm -hmm. And then she starts calling her baby. Yeah. She starts treating her like that's her girlfriend. And I thought that was inappropriate. And Carrie goes with it too. Like Carrie wants that. Which is kind of like leading her on. When Carrie makes it clear, she tells her, I'm not not interested in girls. I'm not interested in, but then she kind of reciprocates. I'm like, okay, is she leading her on? Or what's going on what's here? Happening. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, and if you don't, I think it's easy to be more forgiving of it because it's, you know, it is trying to be inclusive and I think it has its heart in the right place, but mm-hmm. look at it with like a typical straight situation. If there's a guy at your work who says he's in love with you and you're not into him, um, that's toxic. Yeah. So that's, how is this any different? You know, what Andy's doing, the way she's behaving mm-hmm. is it's wrong. Kind of toxic. Yes, it's toxic. And Carrie not putting her foot down and saying, hey, I made it clear I'm not into this. Mm-hmm. Or saying, hey, you know, maybe I'm not into girls, but maybe I'm into you. I'm exploring this. Yeah. But she never really says that either. She kind of like brushes it off. Uh, she's kind of like not. It, it feels like she she doesn't care enough about the situation That's at all yeah, to she really give it any thought. She honestly doesn't act like she cares about Andy at all. She acts like she needs Andy for safety. Yes. For protection. Yes. Like a security system. Mm -hmm. Like she treats her like it's her Kevin Costner and she's Whitney Houston in The Bodyguard. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like it's her job. Not like it's somebody that she loves. It's not love. It's like a trauma reaction. It is. And she doesn't seem to like Andy. Mm -hmm. She talks down to Andy all the time. She treats Andy like she's low class. I agree. I agree 100%. So I don't like it. I don't yeah. like it. And I I like LGBTQ relationships. I like good relationships well, in books, period. Knock at the cabin. That was a great that one. That was great beautiful. One. That was a gorgeous love story. Um, but yeah, I think it, it's cool if you're straight and you want to include that in your book. 
but you got to think of it like any other relationship. Like if I did this to a girl, um, if you're straight, would it be okay? Same rules apply. Yeah. You know, I agree. And with any relationship in any book, um, you know, straight, LGBT or otherwise, I want to know why you like them, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I need to know why, you know, a lot of people like to dog on Twilight. I love Twilight a lot, but they're pretty clear about why they like each other. Mm -hmm. He is happy that he finally found somebody whose mind he can't read and it's peace of mind. And yeah, he's really, really hot guys. I mean, he's really hot. That's the only reason (laughs) he has to like him. That's the only reason. But at least they explain it. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't make, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And then Peter, also has like love. He had like had a crush on her when they were younger, and then he reached out to her before he died. Um, and yeah, it seems it like really it was just because she's pretty. Yeah, she's just pretty, and, and she's girly, and she's the one that they hung out with. Yeah, so, yeah. But I agree. I didn't like that. I well, I liked the monsters. I liked uh, the like the who done it. I love Tim. Tim is everything. Um, Tim was perfect. The Dunia, um, I liked her a lot. That whole situation was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I almost want to go back and read that last quarter of the book again to get a better understanding of like everything. So, there's a little bit of witchcraft in here, mm-hmm. and from a witch perspective, I'm gonna say some things I liked, some things I didn't like. One thing I like, I am completely with Nate. Why is it whenever we talk about witches, we bring up Salem? Mm-hmm. Why is Salem Halloween all I, I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, honestly, even today, when you when you have witch groups online, most real witches don't live in Salem because yeah. it's, for lack of a better word, tacky. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it would be a cool place to visit. But yeah, you're not likely to find a lot of real witches. There. And there weren't real witches during the Salem witch trials. I and mean, yet, you know, Nate brings up like, why do they always bring up Salem? Yet he makes the same mistake. That even Scooby Doo and a lot of other books and movies make, where they talk about witches being burned at Salem. Not a single witch was burned at Salem, guys. All right, let's just let's let's put a kibosh on that. Nobody was burned. People were hung. A guy was crushed with stones. That's it. Nobody Did was they burned. Do more of like the drowning trick and stuff out there. I don't. Know. In Salem, they just hung them. Oh, they had gallows, and there's one guy they crushed with the rocks. They just kept putting more and more on. That's really sad. It's really, yeah. really sad. But it's like, if you're going to talk about it, go talk to a Wikipedia right. article yeah. and, and get it right. Yeah. And Native, all people should have gotten it right. Um, almost most of all of the witch trial stuff was hanging. That's mm-hmm. largely the way it was done. Or drowning mm-hmm. from dunk tanks. Yeah. Um, there was burning. That's mostly a European thing. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I am telling them that for a whale. So, <laughs> yes, I love that they addressed the Salem thing. I wish he would have read a Wikipedia article to just get his facts right on that. Because yeah. not only were there no witches, there was no burning. Yeah. Um, but the witchcraft thing was cool. Like how they, they introduced, you know, the Necronomicon. Um, the Necronomicon. Like, just time for Evil Dead. Yes. Um, lots of that kind of thing. And it was really fun. Um, I did get a little confused. Um, I we don't, we don't want to go into a spoiler area yet. But I did get a little confused. When they were explaining all that a little bit. How like the vessels and stuff work. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which is like a big part of the of of all of it. I don't want to spoil it. But I got confused. So I was thinking I need to go back and reread. I don't know about of it. you, but for me, I got confused during a lot of the action scenes because he's so yeah. invested in like hopping in these different characters' heads and so it feels so personal. And then you get into an action scene, and sometimes it is still personal. You'll be mm-hmm. feeling it from Andy's point of view or something. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times he really pulls back and it becomes just a straight third person thing. And mm-hmm. I just got less invested in it. And he's mm-hmm. throwing a lot of action my way. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, okay, punch, punch, kick, kick. What what happens next? Yeah, I agree. The act I liked the action the way that he was describing the stuff that was happening down in the mine, Mm -hmm. that part was really fun. But then when they pulled, when they got out and there was that whole thing, um, I didn't really, that part got really confusing to me. And this book has more endings than Return Return of the King, dude. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, it's done. Like I'm kicking ass. I'm done. I was done. Done uh, no. a day ahead of time. No, no, no. It's it kind of drug, going. but um, and what was oh, okay? There's there are some parts in this book I will say that tonally are weird. Like they're not even fun in a goofy Scooby Doo game. Wait, um, Nate getting broken out of the asylum. Didn't yeah. like that. That was I didn't even really understand what was happening there. I, I didn't like, really either. The dog mm-hmm. pulled him out of a chair. Yeah, that didn't make any damn sense to me. Yeah. Um, 
there's a thing at the ending where it's like, yay, the day is saved. And then it's something happens. And it was just like, wow, that was out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Like as, as jolting as the hand of God showing up at the end of the stand. So not a fan of things like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very mixed bag, guys. It is a yeah. bag of mixed things. It is a bag of mixed nuts is what it is. I think on IMDb, you can only give whole stars. So I gave it four. On oh, Goodreads. Oh, yeah. Sorry. That's what I meant. <laughs> IMDb, too. But you have out of 10. True. Um, but I, I gave it a four. I think I would have given it a three and a half. Like, it was fun to read. I'm really glad we read it. Um, but... I'm so mixed. Like, yeah. there was one point where I was, like, halfway through. I'm like, oh, I'm really enjoying this. I don't really want it to be over yet. Yeah. I wish there was another book. Yeah. You I know? would love another book. I would read yes. a second book. I liked it that much. I would read a second book. But we're going to pick really a Really need him to do something with Carrie. Yeah. Because she, yeah. especially, it, was, it got further and further into the book. And mm -hmm. I really started to think that their relationship was kind of toxic. And didn't really, I wasn't really rooting for him. No, I wasn't um, at all. I was like, Carrie, you know, Andy, you can do better. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, she could have. She really could have. She really, you deserve somebody who's nice to you. Yeah. You know, find a, another hot redhead who's nice to you. Um, What else do we need to talk about? Did Love any, the dog. Yeah. Did anybody else read it? Yeah. Did anybody else read it? What do you, what do you think? I know uh, Mummy Bee Movie did read it. I know she didn't like it. Um, <laughs> she was not a fan of Andy and Carrie's relationship either. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I, I was fine with the inclusion of, you know, a relationship for Andy that's, you know, with a, a girl. I just don't, I'm, she can do better than, she can it, do better. Guys, it's, I found the perfect way to explain it. I love Willow and Tara. Yes. It's one of my oh favorite my God, relationships yes. of all time. I hate Willow and Kennedy. Yeah, absolutely. It was very that. Yeah. yeah. So it. this is super fun. It's a world I really was having so much fun in and it was so cinematic. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I really want to get this three and a half stars. Yeah. I'm probably going to go ahead and give it four. I did. I gave it four, but in my head it's, it's three and a half. It's a solid um, three and a half. I, I would love to see it be an HBO show because I think HBO would be the perfect people <laughs> to do it. She's just Please. eating her butt. <laughs> goofy. You're so cute. Um, because they did Lovecraft Country too, right? Oh, like, that's right. I do think those that, are books too. Are they? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I need to read those too. Oh um, gosh, she's so like. <sighs> I do think uh, they would be the people to do it, and I think it would make a really good dark, gritty mystery TV show, like Supernatural, but darker and or even um, kind of um like how showtime is yellow jackets which i need to finish that too i've seen two episodes and i loved it but it's really good yeah. but it kind of made me think of like you know like shows like that and we got welcome to dairy coming to hbo mm -hmm. like those kind of shows yes. i would i, I think it would it'd be cool it. if you separated like yellow jackets with the past and then the present mm -hmm. and went back and forth yeah i agree yeah it's good do we want to talk spoilers at all? Or? Why not? Let's okay. do it. Spoiler talk. All right. Not super spoilery, but spoiler. Well, you know yeah. what? Screw it. Spoiler. I don't care. I, 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 I I'm gotta, bad at spoilers. I've got to rant. I might be too spoilery for some do people. It. I don't Spoil know how to do everything. it. Spoil everything. Spill the tea, girl. <laughs> they don't have any tea to spill, but. Well, whatever you're drinking. So the whole the whole thing with don't the start. vessels and how they take over and Dunia and how she was all those people, mm -hmm. I didn't understand how it worked. I was very confused and I did not like that Tim was a vessel. Didn't like that. Didn't like it. Okay. I will talk about that. So they have, it is confusing. So there's this guy who was like a warlocky guy mm -hmm. and he's like also his son and all these other things, but um, he is a necromancer. So he brings back people and gets information and eventually he kind of separates his soul into each of the, vessels vessels bodies. so like when peter died he got part of it back and so that's what he wants in there so he can get those pieces back they're kind of like horcruxes yeah yeah kind of like horcruxes um i was i didn't harry potter i didn't I'm sure you guys know i didn't understand what if did it ever explain the peter in nate's head no, and I really wanted to do them to explain that. I was actually really, really, really hoping they would use yeah. the necromancy to bring Peter back. Me too. Which um, I, I mean, also was kind of hoping kinda that Joey happened, would die and they would bring Peter back in his body. Yeah, 
Because I'm a horrible person. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but I wanted yeah. them to bring Peter back. I also wanted to find out that that wasn't a hallucination, that it yeah. was real. But it really kind of seemed like it was a hallucination. It was really, it was kind of confusing. Um, um, essentially what happened is when Peter killed himself, uh, he was able to take over the physical body. Yeah, okay. And that's why he looks like Peter. That's fi- Peter's body, but it's not his, his soul's kind of in there too. That's where he tries to talk to Carrie right. at one point. Yeah. That part was really confusing to me. And then the whole explanation of, of Dunia, Dunia, um, Dunia, Dunia, how far she, her, her line went back was confusing to me. Um, so Dunia is basically the same guy. The same guy. He just, I guess maybe that's what they mean by transphobic because that's a trans character. Maybe how like that, that person had been so many different people um, and they just kind of flitted from body to body. Um, but it know. is the same guy. It he is just, the same guy, he, yeah. They explained that they did, yeah. like, gender reassignment surgery and stuff. Like, yeah. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. I didn't pick up on it. I was really confused. So it's the yeah. same guy. He first is this dude. And then he's his son who inherits all his wealth. And then he's his daughter. Mm-hmm. I think. Or did he possess it? Because he did marry a woman who had a daughter. But no, 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 no. He did change because her daughter died at childbirth. Uh And then he mused coming back as her and said, he basically lied and said that he was the daughter. The daughter daughter died at childbirth. And he just took over her body. No, he didn't take over her body. It's his body. He He changed it to look female. I see. I didn't, I didn't pick up on that. I was, he took her, he stole her identity, but kept his body. Okay. Okay, then that makes sense. It is a little confusing. Maybe that's what they mean by transphobic. Because it is, um, I mean, it is kind of a thing in horror movies where the evil person is the trans person. So that I can see. Being transgender for a different purpose than like gender dysphoria or this person isn't transitioning because they are trying to get into their what they you know their true yeah, form their true body it's a um, nefarious purposes they're doing it to be sneaky yeah so yeah. uh that i could see i could see that too. i could see that, that. We're talking about it and just meaning it through yeah, a little bit um, so here's the thing i absolutely hate so the whole book ends and i'm already like yeah because carrie and andy and it's mm-hmm. like girl you can do better yeah. well so why were there not a lot there were not hardly any women in this book which no, is weird i mean andy and carrie are kind of main characters but almost all the side characters are dudes mm-hmm. so i couldn't even ship andy with anybody else because yeah. there's just not a lot of ladies in this dude no. um get some more ladies in your books edgar um let's yeah. see I mean, even Dunia, I guess it was this wizard warlock truly, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there's the big monster that they fight in the end, which okay. I had a hard time picturing, too. But I think by that point, I was so confused about the other things that I was kind of, like, not. So, tacked on to the end of the book, Nate goes home. Nate goes home. And I was kind of excited at first because the dog talks. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, so they're kind of like an explanation for why does Scooby-Doo talk? Yeah. But it's not really the dog. It's actually the same dog they originally had. It's Sean. But it's not even really a dog. It's it's possessed by the spirit of a Native American man yes. who lived there. So And he gets passed from dog to dog. Yeah, which made me sad for him. Mm-hmm. Like, he deserves better than having to live his life as a dog if yeah. he's human. Um, but I also wanted him to just be and then i thought about all the times he got swatted and stuff i'm like oh my gosh dude like hate crimes yeah let's uh put a curse on carrie no kidding um yeah i didn't like that i i I liked his dogness i wanted him to just be a cool little dog like some things don't make sense then like he was so happy yeah uh when he met the canary like that's not how human did you ever see the movie love and monsters no okay there's a dog in that movie that he's able to like kind of communicate he doesn't talk at all but he's like evolved because they're in this crazy world like an up um no not even like (laughs) an up like he just he's he's really intelligent like he's understanding what you're saying and he's able to get his point across too by like you know motioning or like pointing at things with his face i wanted him to be more like that in the that's cool like his own just super smart dog that's what i well yeah and so that's the thing like when you watch scooby as well they never explain why Scooby can talk. Other dogs cannot talk. Mm-hmm. Uh, so unless you're a member of the Dew family. So Ma- Take, lay some Scooby oh, let's hear it. Let's hear Mama it. Mama and Daddy Dew can talk. Okay. Scooby Dumb, his cousin, can talk. 
Scrappy Doo, his nephew, can talk. But if you're not a member of the Doo family, you cannot talk. Um, also, Scooby Honey, I'm just throwing this out there into the into the universe. Just because it's a poodle doesn't mean it's a girl dog, right? Stop, <laughs> I stop, I stop assuming. Voice. Yeah. I do too. Whenever he sees a poodle, it's like girl dog. I'm like, no, Scooby no. Honey, no. That's not how it works. <laughs> I rant. Yeah. Anyway, so um, I would have liked. I'm fine with him talking. Yeah. I wanted him to be a dog, though. Yeah. I wanted him to not talk when he was, like, getting up the the oomph to talk. I was like, no, 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 no. Like, don't do it. Don't talk. And, and then he talked. They should like, have oh, revealed oh. him talking before the climax. I agree. Not tack it on at the end. Yes, I agree. It was weird. I agree. A hundred percent. Yeah. This is a cool book club Afro whale. Get in on it. <laughs> guys, see that? Afro Whale in the chat saying this is a cool book club. Cool book club. You know what? Afro Whale setting trends around town everywhere. <laughs> you want to be around cool like world. around the world. You want to be cool like Afro Whale? You better join this book club. Super yeah. easy. All you have to do is read the book, watch the stream, talk about the book. Yeah. Easy as pie. If you want extra talking about the book, join the Goodreads group. Yeah. Please. We'll talk your ear off yes. about the book like we are right now. Haley was really active in the Goodreads group this time. I was, I was not as much. Um, I promised I would, see? You did. You did a really good job. Oh, I even what broke it down. So I broke down my rating into a few little things. Oh, hey, there's Mommy Be Movie. What's up? Hi, Mommy. So for writing style, I, I did these out of five stars. And I didn't do any half stars because that's how Goodreads does it. But mm -hmm. I gave it a three out of five just because I didn't like the head hopping. Yeah. But I do think his descriptions were really good. For ease of reading, I gave it a two. Just because some of the um, head hopping and just... Yeah. I know a lot of people on Goodreads were complaining about how it would switch, switch to like screenwriting. A lot of people mm -hmm. didn't like the writing stuff. I liked that part. I yeah. really liked that part. I felt like I it liked made it. It, it broke it up a little bit. And it made it not feel like such a chore. I don't know. I really liked that part. I don't that. know if I liked it or disliked it. I don't mind it. But yeah. I can see that that's going to be a deterrent for some people. Uh, characters, Carrie really upset me. So I went with two. Yeah. Um, and I wanted more. Like you said, more yeah, backstory. I more. Story, I gave it a three. Yeah. And I didn't give it a horror score, but I would give it a solid three. A three. I think a three is fair. Overall, I gave it a three and a half out of five. You can't do three and a half. So I went with three. I, went, I, went, I can go either way. I can go yeah. three or four. Three or four. Yeah, it was really fun. I would, if there was a sequel, I would read it. If there was a show, I would watch it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. A lot of a uh, lot of things that confused me, and a, a, quite a handful of things I didn't like. Yeah, I feel like this book. I was really excited, and at first, I was like, "Oh, this book is going to be great. It's going to be <gasps> solid." It's not a scrappy do at a flim flam. <laughs> flim flam is the absolute worst. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. absolute worst. Um. I'm oh, so sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, honey. It's. I feel like it happened the opposite of the in every generation. In every generation, I started out not liking it at all. I was like, this feels very fan fiction. But by the end of it, I really liked it, and mm -hmm. I really liked the characters. The characters were the best part of that book. Yeah. Um, and then this book, I kind of like the opposite. I started it thinking I was really gonna love it, and I it wasn't scary enough. Um, and the characters really sucked. Yeah, I agree. Like, I started off as someone really strong. Like, oh, I was telling, like, you know, Lols and Danny, and like, you guys have to read this. It's so good. And I mm -hmm. still really do recommend it. Just I'm glad it you read it. it. Um, but I was less enthused about it towards the end, mm -hmm. where I was like, ah. I don't know. Once all the pieces started to come together, I was less sold on it. Yeah. And it could, I feel like it could have landed really well, mm -hmm. but it just didn't. Whereas, like, you, with you in every generation, at first it was, like, the recycling stuff was all really yeah. goofy. But they had to very, lay the foundation. I know. It was very, like, right. Disney afternoon yes. show. Like, this was way too young for me. And then mm -hmm. I got really into it. Yes. So. I agree. 100%. So, yeah. You know, um, the ending's not as strong as the beginning. But I still think this is a worthy read. It's one I recommend. I recommend as well. Yeah. I'm glad we read it. I don't feel like I wasted my time. I agree. And. Yeah. Honestly, I trudged, not trudged, I, I chugged through this one pretty quickly. Um, it's like I said, it's not as easy of a read as something like a, in every generation. It's just yeah. a really easy, breezy summer read. Yeah. Um, it's a little harder to it get through some of the, the action month. scenes. It took me the whole month. Um, but uh, I, think I read this in about a week. Yeah. Uh, I know Mummy B movie read it pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, when it's good, it's really good. Mm -hmm. um, also, there's no chapter numbers, which I found really annoying. 
so I was also listening to the audiobook at the same time. Like I was going back and forth, and the audiobook breaks it down by chapters. There's like 70 oh. chapters or something. I don't know. This I didn't is, have chapter numbers. It doesn't have chapter numbers, people. but in the on the audiobook, it does have chapter numbers. That's nice. Um, so that night that Doug went over to your guys' house and was playing games that I picked it up again that night, and that was like when the uh when the monster showed up. So it was like right around page. 120 is where it's things like really started to pick up. Four chapters. Yeah, there's four, four, four acts. Acts, yeah. Um, but yeah, it started to pick up, and then I was like, okay, now I got it. And then I was like into it, and I was like, I gotta see how this all fits together. Yeah. There's real monsters. Um, but then it just kind of didn't. There were didn't some happen. parts where I could not put it down. Mm -hmm. It was so good. I was so excited. I'm like, oh, I don't want the book to end. Mm -hmm. And then there were other parts where I'm just like, all right, we're let's bring bring let's it home, guys. Get through this yes that's when i would bust up that audible to two times speed oh who was that uh reader narrator? it was a girl um she was pretty good actually i really liked her i liked her reading better than uh the lady who did the in every generation i, like to know who I, I don't know, you know her like, name well, was but it was she was, it was, she was though, a yeah. really she was a really good uh narrator um uh, you know spike uh he narrates the dresden files book Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Charisma Tara. Carpenter was Cordelia's narr narrated a lot, too. So does Tara. And she's written books, too. Oh, well, that's cool. Um, Amber. Her name is Kyla Garcia. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Um, she did a pretty good job, though. I, I liked it. I didn't feel taken out of it. Um, she did, like, all the all the voices really well. Um, it's, it's hard with audiobooks. Like, you can get really, really bad ones. Like, I was reading the – I listened to The Casual Vacancy by J.K. Rowling – on audiobook and I wish I had just read it because it was <laughs> a really cool book. Like I think about it all the time, but the way that the guy read it, the way he did the voices, um, cause they're also like kind of trashy British people, right? The way mm -hmm. he did some of the voices was really obnoxious. And what I, I really liked wish was I uh, just read it. the book thief, the guy who did the voice of death was so good. Yeah. So like maybe sometimes it makes it better. Yeah. And I love ones where they have a full cast. Like I don't Brazil. like that. Really? I, I find that. it very distracting. I want one person just reading me a story. Yeah, um, another one, uh, Stephen King. Like, you would think him reading his own books is good, but sometimes, no. 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 Okay. I, I like it when they do know. voices and stuff, too. Good to know. I have some Star Adrian Wars Adrian King, uh, the final girl of Friday the 13th, does Final Girl Support Group, which Danny's been mm. listening to. is really good. Hmm, that sounds fun. Final Girl Support Group. That's a really good... Grady Hendrix, dude. Okay. He's, like, one of my favorite authors. So I want to read uh, How to Sell a Haunted House at some point. But what we're going to do is we're going to do themes. So when we're doing our stream, we're going to plan out what those are. And then we'll um, announce those on our Goodreads page. I also found out you can start a book club on Amazon. Maybe I'll do that. Ooh, I mean, Goodreads and Amazon, like, are They're links. They're linked. So, yeah. Yeah. So the book we're reading now is Clown in a Cornfield. I almost said Corn in a Clown Field. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> I do not want to go into a clown field. Clown in a cornfield, which I'm really excited. It looks good. It looks really fun. So I'm really excited about this book because if you guys follow Adam Caesar, he is on YouTube. He reviews a lot of books. I've been following him for a long time. I'm friends with him on Goodreads. Not biased. We're not friends as in like you're friends on Goodreads. You follow each other, guys. Um, so no, I don't know the man personally or anything. Anyway, he is a really cool dude, though, and he has got a really cool channel. Um, and I, this book must be good. Um, one, well, they're picking it up for a show, aren't they? Yeah. It's a show or a movie or something, something. Yeah. It's getting an adaptation. On Netflix. You know way more about this than I do. Oh, I just, I, I, might I thought it was that. a movie, but that sounds cool. It's something, it might be a movie on Netflix. Netflix he also Netflix made a that. sequel that just came out mm -hmm. and, uh, I was going to say something else, but I forgot. He made a sequel. It's going to be a something. And it's going to be a thing. Oh, also, Clive Barker has a quote on the, the cover of the book saying that's really scary. It's Clive Barker. So yeah, we trust his uh, opinion. We trust his opinion. Uh, so, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. The pretty dog is Ripley. This is uh, Kayla's oh, dog. That's Ripley. She is so cute eating her foot. Um, so this sounds like a really fun book. I don't know all the details of it. I'm only kind of like halfway through the first chapter. Uh yeah. Essentially, this this town has a cornfield. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's in the title. It's kind there of a slashery type thing. Yeah. Um, it is, I think, supposed to be a young adult book. Mm -hmm. um, so it should be an easy read. Uh, but yeah, there's a clown in the corn. 
<laughs> His oh. name's Friendo, I think. And he, for whatever reason, decides that he needs to call the children. Of, it's like a reverse children of the corn. He needs to kill all the, you know, teenagers and children of this town. So that needs to not happen. Yeah. And that's the, the plot. Of the I'm excited. I'm excited to read it. And I'm excited that there's a second one. We yes. should at some point read the second Buffy book. Well, theme. I have for one of my suggestions for a theme is to read a sequel. Ooh. Oh, I got some things we to have show a you. A sequel. I know, I know, I know. Okay, well, cool. We're just trudging line along in our book club, guys. Yeah. It's like our third book. It's like an official book club yeah, now. It's, it's kind of now. it's kind of a big deal. Yeah. So if you guys want to read, uh sometimes books do have pictures. I Actually, actually uh Medellin Kids had a picture. I have this one. Madeline Kitts had a picture in the beginning. Hey, it's that like, one best book of last year. I would love to read this one. This one has, it's like all about the pictures. Yeah? It's like it's whole Is thing. it good? Have I you have, read it? No, I haven't read it yet. Look at that. That one best uh, book on Goodreads last year. Not on why I bought it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's the Goodreads it. best yeah. book, which is cool. And usually, I, usually Goodreads, sometimes Goodreads, uh, their awards, like if there's a Stephen King book, it almost always wins. So when something else wins, mm -hmm. And there's a Stephen King book up. I'm like, all right, I should read that. Yeah. It's probably a good book. We should read that one at some point, but we'll figure out when. Maybe, maybe it'll be a year, but we'll get to it. But first, we're going to read this clown in cornfield. Because here's my logic, guys. Here's the logic. It's April. April Fool. Why am I doing like a Jack Nicholson <laughs> voice? <laughs> Forget that. So it's April. April Fool's Day. Yeah. Uh, clowns. April Fools. Fools. It's Dusty. clown themed. Yeah. Clown in a cornfield. That's the logic. Get behind it. Also, just because I had to push this back and I wanted to start reading the book. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll come up with something for May. Um, suggestions, I feel like, are always encouraged. Yes. I have a thing where you can post suggestions on our Goodreads group. A link to our Goodreads group is in the description below. So please join. Yeah. We would love that. Yeah. Um, and you can find Clown in the Cornfield on Amazon. It's on Kindle, paperback, hardback, yeah. on Barnes & Noble. I'm I sure think you can get it at Walmart. It's on yeah. all the places. I found it through the library app. I'm reading it on Hoopla. Yeah, I got so. it from Kindle. Yeah. And it wasn't much. It was 10 bucks and I had some credits, so yeah. I got it for like 4 bucks. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, perfect. All right. Well, thanks everybody. And it has an Audible. Oh, she nice. loves she loves yeah, the Audible. I do. It's so easy. It's so nice. It's so easy. You can do many other things. Like you can be making dinner and then someone can read you a book. I wonder who reads the book. I bet, bet, bet they're good. I bet they are too. It's worth looking right. into. So please, guys, read the book, Caught in a Cornfield. We will, um, hey, I was going to suggest something to do. I'm going to suggest you all in our life. Can we do the first Thursday of every month instead of the Absolutely. first Tuesday? Absolutely. Okay, because then I have like, I, send, I have my Sunday stream yes. and Danny's Monday stream. So I think this is a really good idea. Anyways, because at Norwood, the wine bar down on the avenue, like right by our shop, they do a silent reading night on the first Tuesday of every month where you go and you drink wine and you can't talk. We could do that. Yeah, it would be really fun. I was like, oh, I'll never be able to go because we have book club. Oh, first yes. Thursday of every month. Thursday. You heard it here. Look at th this is just a good thing. We yes. got, we're on the same page. You and me. <laughs> first thursday of every month yes. so i believe that is actually the fourth of may i yeah. think it is the fourth of may um, i might just be pulling that yeah it is it is okay. it's the fourth of may sweet Perfect. all right so um not Perfect. sure where the book will be but uh yeah stay tuned for updates and goodreads yeah. and we will be talking about clown in a cornfield five. may 4th yeah, yeah. Thursday. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, Horror Addicts and Ariel and Afro Whale. Is the next book written by Stephen King? Oh, the guy who did, um, he's he's being um, obnoxious. Oh, is he? <laughs> it's because there's a book called Sharks in the Corn. Sharks in the oh. Corn. And they advertise it by saying it's by Stephen King, like spilling okay. it like that. Okay. I like it. No, it's not. it's not. No, it's not. No. It's not. No, we're gonna read good books. We're gonna try to read good books. Okay, like we can't promise. We've never read them before. No, but no. So far, we haven't struck out. Yeah, I think so. we're gonna be all right. All right. Okay. Anything? Anything you have to say to them, Kayla? I don't think so. Thank you so much. <laughs> we love you. We love you. Bye. Blessed be. Blessed be. Oh yeah. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>